Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to work around keyframing. We're going to go into some advanced keyframing with effects. So now we're actually getting into some of the fun stuff. Now, I'm going to use an effect as an example here. I'm going to take the TV simulator and take the bad sync and drag it to this track here to this uh, video file right here. Bam, there you go. Now it's all distorted and all kinds of stuff, right? And um, you can actually keyframe all this stuff by clicking this button down here that says animate. Now when you click that, you get keyframes like you normally do when you are zooming in and out and stuff like that on your videos. And you can actually keyframe your effects. So let's say you want it to start off by being not distorted over here. Uh, I think the way to do that is uh, get this one all the way up, I think, and that one there, and I'm turning all these down, as far as I remember. Okay, that was not the one. And I think this one needs to be, yeah, this is the way. So right now it's not doing anything. So if I play the file right now, see nothing's going on in the clip. So we wanted to start off with not doing anything and then a little bit into the video, like let's say, I'm gonna scroll upwards on my mouse wheel to zoom in. As you can see right now, it's zooming in and go a little bit back. You can see here, it's like, how far is that in? Two seconds in, you can see down here. Um, let's say exactly two seconds, right there. I want another keyframe, so I'll push add keyframe Bam, right there. I want it to go nuts with effects and stuff. So I'll just mess around with these settings. Um, and it doesn't seem to do anything at all. Why is that? See what it does, it makes like a transition into actually doing something with the effect. Let's see how it works, how it looks. See, it just goes nuts. Right? This is a really cool effect, but what you can also do is take this first keyframe right here, right click on it, and select hold. Now what this does is, this tells your keyframes that this keyframe is not supposed to do anything before this one happens. So see what happens now when I uh, scroll through this, all of a sudden, bam, it just goes, it just adds all the effects. So let's play it now. Boom, there you go. Now you can also change this even more. Let's take this one and put it down to normal. Uh, linear fade like it was at the beginning So you see the effect coming like this Now at this point right here, we can also say that we want it to go Even more nuts. So add another keyframe here Just mess around with the settings Like that so let's have a look at it from the beginning again so, see, it just adds more stuff to it, really. And then we want it to go back into normal again. Now, what I normally do is when I want it to go back into normal, I add a keyframe, I go back to the first one, right click on it and say copy. Go to the last one and say paste. Now, let's see how that looks, all of it. Oh shit, I went all the way back. I wasn't supposed to do that. You just go back here and click right there. And let's see how it looks. Then see, then it just goes back to normal again. Now you can do this with multiple keys. I'm just gonna go back into this. 
See, now it's just all cluttered up because it, yeah. <laughs> so zooming in is just with the scroll wheel. Once you've clicked here, you can, you can just zoom in. Now we can add a lot more keyframes and do a lot more weird shit to it. But this is basically how you do it. But you can also, like I said, do this whole hold thing. Set this one to uh, hold. And then oh, for some odd reason it wanted to zoom in again. Then take this last one here. And set that one to hold as well. Let's say you have music going on. And all of a sudden here, some something explodes in the music or whatever, right? That means it's going to go nuts around here. And then there the explosion ends. Just for dr dramatic effects or whatever. So what's going to happen now is nothing's going to happen until this keyframe um, starts. When this one, uh, when it hits this keyframe, it's not... It's still going to do the effect that's on here until, see, it's just going to be still until this one, bam, then it's going to go back to normal. So if we play that right now, effects coming in and stuff, and then boom, back to normal. Now this can be really effective when you have music in the, in the background of your montage PvP videos or, you know, first person shooter games and stuff like that by adding keyframes. And um, when you want them to happen at a certain point, use the uh, the uh, right click on your keyframes and use the hold uh, ability or what you should call that. And then you can actually get some really awesome effects out of this. I, I think this one is really, really weird. Like it's, it's way too much. And I can't really see what's going on on the static. Let's turn on the static on this one. And also do that with this one. Let's see what happens then. I'll just remove the uh, hold, set it back to linear. But the best way to get, you know, a good result with these things is just try them out because there's no guidelines to this stuff. So now it goes like that. See? So the static, the static in, in the effect will add a more, a lot more, um, Distortion or what you should call it. See, it just goes nuts if you have a lot of static going on. See, it looks kind of cool. So by using your keyframes right, and you can add multiple keyframes. Let's say here you want something completely different to happen. Let's say on... Um, I've turned down the static on this one. Say in between here... I want to add a keyframe right there, turn up the static a whole lot, and in between here as well, add another one and turn up the static a lot. That means that it's going to see how it moves. Look up here on these things and see how it moves uh, while I'm dragging this. So it will do all these things for you. So you can do some really, really, really advanced stuff with this. Let's actually see how it looks. Oh my god. Uh. <laughs> really awesome stuff. You can do this with any effect. Any effect. You can also do this with... I believe you can do this with transitions as well. I'm not sure. I actually haven't tried. Take a cross effect. See, I want to blur it out at the end here. And go into this. Yes, you can. You can animate this. So see at the beginning. Actually, this one down here. Sync cursor with media timeline. Uh, to the media uh, timeline. Bam, like that. That means that if I go right there, for example. And I go into the effect again. Animate. See, it set my, my timeline in here to the timeline that's in my... In my video track right there so i can just zoom in i believe i can do that but just oh well that just moved it whatever doesn't matter but see we can do that with the, the transitions as well so we can actually select that we want a keyframe right there then we take the range fade turn that down to like 300 ish 
take the same with the blur to like 300 and then go further on see it actually see when i move this it moves in here as well which is really awesome and go further in i've zoomed way too far in <laughs> add another keyframe here say that i want this one to be a little more I mean, you can always mess around with these things and and yet again you can use the the hold uh thing i don't know what to call that i'm sorry i'm i <laughs> i don't know what it's uh, it's just holding the keyframes so when i play that see but it, it's set to a fade thing so you won't see the best result but you can actually take this one and just pull it and make a really really long fade time to it that way it's, you can add a little more to it but yeah this is how you do advanced keyframing um, and make effects like this isn't that awesome anyways guys um, you can do this with the event pan crop as well go in here make like a million keyframes you can actually just make them first like this bam and then you can do all kinds of weird shit to it so you want it to go like this and then you want that one to go like that and then you want this one to go like further in and then turn it around i'll actually copy this one right click copy click on that one right click paste and I want that one to turn around like this. And then, you know what? I'm gonna add one extra keyframe. What I normally do is I take the first keyframe and the last keyframe when I when I do it advanced keyframing like this and make them normal. So this one is still normal. This one was turned, so I'll have this one go like into like this. That way, from this keyframe to this keyframe it'll go back to normal so let's see how that looks from right there but that's with the effects now actually i'll go in and remove the effect then uh, i believe that's right there and i will remove this effect there you go so see how that looks goes in goes out should have made this a bit better with the uh, the timelines, I guess. But as you can see, you can do advanced stuff with this. This is really, really cool, cool stuff. See, now it starts turning around. And then from there, it's going to twitch or twist around to the other side. And eventually it will come out again. But yeah, I could have sped that up so it wouldn't take this long. Let me just go in and correct that. So let's zoom in a bit. Take this stuff all the way back here. This stuff all the way back here. Take that one. All the way back here and god damn it <laughs> all the way back here that means it's gonna go really fast now actually i'll just control click on that one so i can drag them both okay maybe i should just zoom out like that and then like that now let's try playing that because then it's not gonna be as as long so go like this shaboom and then you can mix it up with effects as well 
Remember guys, it's it's only your imagination that sets the limits here. You can do all kinds of weird shit. So you could combine that with an effect as well. So let's see, let's do the exact same thing again. Go to video effects, take that one, pull that in there. I want that one to be normal at the beginning. Get back there. And animate. I'm actually gonna remove that because sometimes that can actually mess things up when you pull in effects, but yeah. Um, so we have that one, so a little bit into that. I'll be about... That's way too long. Isn't it? So this is like, yeah, a couple of seconds. So let's say two seconds in. I feel like I'm just jabbering on here. I'm just trying to make my point though <laughs> with the uh, with the, the key, with that in keys, keyframes. Another one, I'll just make four. So I'll take this one right here and I'll add all kinds of weird shit to it. Like that, not too much static, only a little bit. And then take these ones up like that, and like that. I'll actually copy that one, copy. I find that best when you copy these ones, when you want them to be close to each other in effects, but not too close either. So you can do like this and this and turn that one down and that one there, 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 and add more static. So let's see how that looks with the, the stuff we made before. She's actually zooming in, I think. Yep. See? The sky sets the limit, dude. So <laughs> but yeah, I'm just jabbering on now. You know you know what to do, guys. But I just wanted to show you guys how you can mess with these effects and how you can mix things together to make awesome effects in your videos if you want to do some montage videos or... Just when something's going on in your gameplay, even if it's if it's a let's play, you can do stuff like this if you want to. <laughs> I'm not saying you should, but you can. But yeah, if you found this useful, leave me uh, some uh, some comments and uh, thumbs it up. Even some video responses that would be awesome. Thanks for watching. I know this was a long one, but you know I, I, I just wanted to get this out there and you know kind of prove my point. But yeah, take care, guys. Have fun. See you in the next one.